Hello everybody! Happy Art Day! Welcome to Freakin' Art! I'm Anastasia and I'm so glad you decided to join me to make some art today. Today we're gonna learn about process-based art. What's that? Well, process-based art is where the process or the system of how we make our art is actually more important than the final art. A lot of artists use this and get some really interesting results. I've used it in my own work, like these paintings behind me had their own little system to get where they are. But today we're gonna make some process-based art using some blowing bubbles and food dye. Now, before we start, let's do a little breathing and a little stretch so we can be super focused and relaxed to make our awesome creations. Are you ready? Okay, everybody breathe in and breathe out. Let's do that one more time. Breathe in and breathe out. Now let's roll our shoulders back. And can you roll them forward? And let's interlace our fingers and stretch out those fingers and our hands and our arms. Ooh. Woo. I felt good. I'm focused and ready to go. I hope you are too. Now, to, for today's class, we're going to need a piece of paper. I'm using watercolor paper. You could use any kind of paper you have, just if it's a little bit thinner, it might get wrinkly. But don't let that get you down. We're, I'm going to be using food dye. And I'm using my primary color, so I got my yellow, my red, and my blue. Now, food dye is going to stain a lot of stuff, so you might want to do this outside if it's a nice day, or put down some newspaper. If you don't have food coloring, you could use some of your watercolor paint or your tempera paint in the bubbles as well. It's just going to look a little bit different. That said, we need our bubbles. I got two different ones. Some paper towels because we're going to get a little bit messy. And you might want a popsicle stick if you just have one wand so you can stir your dye into the bubbles. And if you just have one wand, you might also want some water so you can clean off your wand in between the different colors. Now, as you can see, these beautiful abstract paintings were made by blowing these colored bubbles onto the paper. Now, I had a hard time with my bubbles. A lot of time I just got splatters because I couldn't get my bubbles to form, but that looked nice too. So the bubbles are making a mark, and even just the splattering, if you didn't get a bubble, will make a mark too. And the more you layer it, because you can see the food coloring in the bubbles is kind of transparent. So the more you layer it, the more vibrant the colors are. And then you can see, since I was using my primary colors, that where the bubbles hit and mix in the different colors, you're getting your secondary colors, so it looks really nice. Okay, let's put this to the side. So to start, you're gonna need, I forgot to say this, you're gonna need some cups or shallow dishes to mix your bubbles and your food coloring in. So I got my bubbles here. I'm not using any special brand, I just got some from the drugstore, so. No need to spend a lot of money if you don't have bubbles lying around, but you might have bubbles lying around too. And if you have a shallow dish, you don't actually need to put that much bubbles in, just enough so you'll be able to get your wand all the way in to that colored water. 
Next, we're gonna take our food coloring and put a couple drops in each. Now, the food coloring, like I said, it stains. The nice thing about it is it's gonna make very vibrant colors where if you use a uh, watercolor paint or temper paint with your bubbles, they might not be as bright, but it does stain when it lands. So maybe ask the adult in your house to help you with this part, or again, put out some paper on your table if you're not outside. My table is a complete mess already, so I'm not really worried about that. So we're gonna take a, just a couple drops. That was like eight. And mix it in with the bubbles. Do the blue, the red, and the blue. Okay, so I got my primary colors here. Yellow, red, and blue. And put them to the side. I got my paper towels in case I splatter on myself, I can dab that up. And I'm going with one big piece of paper, so hopefully the bubbles can land on here. Hold on one second, I'm gonna get one more wand so I don't have to worry about mixing and messing up my colors. One sec. Okay, I'm back. So now I have a wand for each color so I don't have to worry too much about it. I'm gonna do this laying flat on the table. I know I usually show you going up, but I'll just have to show you how the marks are showing up um, as I go. Now, there's no real technique. I'd say just go for it. Maybe I'll start with a darker color so you can see it better. Okay, let's put our bubble on. We got our colored bubbles on here. Okay, this happened a lot when I was trying to do it before, and I just got a splattering. But that's okay, it looks nice too. Try again. I think your bubble technique is probably better than mine because you probably have more practice at it, but let's see. Ah, this was a good trick I found. If I could blow it a little bit, and then just set it on the paper that it creates that circle. So I'm gonna let that sit there for a second. You can pop it right away too, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. You just figure out the technique or the process that works best for you. Cause remember it's your art, it should look like your art and you should have fun doing it. Let's try another color, we'll try the blue. This is what we got so far. Doesn't look like much, but it looks real great once you get it covered. <laughs> and it's so fun to do. It's like a stress-free art activity. Ah! <laughs> ah! I keep on popping it in my face. So I got a couple bubbles on here. Bop, bop. And for me, it seems to be working better when I blow it a little bit and then I stick the bubble gently on the paper. But if you have a big area or you put out a lot of different papers, it's gotta make a mark when the bubble just naturally lands on it anyway. So just play around and have a lot of fun doing it. You can turn your paper around too. I'm gonna try that. Turn paper as you go and see how that works. Okay, I got a little bit of red, a lot more blue. I'm gonna try out my yellow now. Also, I don't think you need to put that many drops of the food coloring in there. You could start with maybe three and see how that looks. And then if you want it to be darker, make it darker. But really the food coloring, the food dye is really strong. It has nice pigment. So you don't need as much as I put in there. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you guys are doing. 
I'm sure your bubble blowing technique is way better than mine, but let's see where those land. Now what I really love about this is you could keep it pretty open by having a lot of the white of the paper show through and that looks nice. But it also looks really nice when you keep on going on one sheet of paper and just layer it up a bunch. Like that. So it looks good either way. It's really up to you. Like I said, you could have a bunch of paper laid out and just be trying like all of the things maybe you have lots of different bubble wands maybe you have a great collection of bubble wands you could try just having three bubbles or something on one then you could try having as many bubbles as you can fit on one page and try to totally cover it it's gonna look great either way i think my blue bubbles are working the best you can see I'm turning my paper as I go so I can get the bubbles to hit at different angles and, you know, just play with it and have a lot of fun. Well, I don't think you need to watch me blow bubbles forever, but it sure is fine. I think for me, these funky wands worked a lot better than the simple one but I'd love to hear how your process based bubble painting went this is what mine looks like right now I think it looks really nice you can see in the center you get a lot more of the overlapping of the colors so you can see the primary colors are yellow blue and red mixing together to make our secondary colors our orange our green and our purple i think it looks great and even i don't even have that many bubble shapes because i got a lot of splatter shapes from just blowing too hard i guess and not getting that beautiful bubble form but it still made a really cool mark so i can't wait to see what you guys did you probably just need to go set it somewhere and let it dry. Because if you hold it up too long, it's going to have drips. <laughs> so just lay it somewhere to dry. Now it probably look something like this. But I can't wait to see what you guys did. I really like today's class. I hope you guys had just as much fun as I did. Um, please tag me in your photos so I can see your awesome process bubble paintings and if you liked today's class please like and subscribe and share with your friends it really helps me continue making these fun art classes for you here on the internet well let me know if you have any questions feel free to reach out i've got my contact information in the box below well i'll see you guys next week okay <laughs>